Hi, I'm David the Brutus, and today on Jungle Queens we bring you Sheena. Ah, an early series from the 1950s, the early 1950s, starring Irish McCullough. I cannot tell you the significance of this series. I, it was a defining moment in the Jungle Queen movement. It really was. Nobody has played Sheena like Irish McCullough. Well, my goodness, I, I, I'm going to tell you more in some of the intros on the uh, remaining portions of this uh, uh, series. We, we've got 16 episodes that she's done. And actually there's a few more, but they seem to be missing. TV shows that are missing. It's just unfortunate. But anyway, we got 16, so we're going to show four in part one, and then another four in part two, etc. So I'm going to do four intros on Sheena, starring Irish McCullough. But first, just let me uh, talk about Irish McCullough. You know, she started out as a um, uh, model, and even the famous uh, Vargas models. Here she is. Let me just turn to a page. Uh, this is her. You've, you've probably seen that picture before. And there is Vargas um, painting her. Uh, my gosh. As a matter of fact, she was so tall. She lent, it, lent herself very well to um, being a model. She was uh, five foot ten, and and some um, biographers put her at six foot. But uh, here she is. Look how she towers over Vargas. Look at that. She is just one tall woman, and she had a um, fifty a thirty nine inch bust with a a twenty four inch waist. Ah, man. I mean, <laughs> she was tall. Yeah, and oh, and so popular. I mean. She was so stunning as a as a as a woman. Uh, it, it, you could you couldn't help it. Matter of fact, she was an item in pop culture. I have a book here on Elvis, and what Elvis book would be com would be complete without Irish McCullough being a part of it? And there she is putting a knife to Elvis's throat. Okay, so there's that. And you can't talk about uh, modern Amazons modern Amazons without talking about Sheena. You just can't do it because she is really um, the quintessential Amazon, you know, the powerful woman from another time, place, or location. And her name, Sheena, uh, comes from she, you know, the legend, the, the first uh, jungle woman. Uh, back in the 1800s, that novel was written. And boy, it just gave birth to this whole genre of examining woman power. Sheena is um, proto-feminist. It, it's it really is. It's it's feminism in a leopard suit. <laughs> there you go. Oh, I got so much more to tell you about the series and to, to talk about uh, Irish. But uh, first. I, I, I want to read this, and then we're going to get going, and I'll be back to talk about her again in the next part, right? Okay, this is what one uh, woman reviewer wrote about the series that you were about to watch, Sheena. Sheena is the only female portrayed on the tube who didn't conform to the 50s stereotypes. Sheena was a rugged individualist. Watching her struggle in a new adventure every week made me feel capable at a time when everything was so unexplored. If she could handle the jungle, I felt sure I could handle the world. Wow, there you go. And that's why this series is so important. I'm not going to talk any longer. Let's just get to it. I'm David the Bruce. Enjoy this important series.
Yeah. Nice bananas, see? <laughs> she did not try to give Jim that. <laughs> she need go away and Jim can get bananas himself. <laughs> Going. I want to get closer. While he's guarding those cows, he'll charge. Yeah, it'll make a swell picture, won't it? Are you out of your mind? My editor wants action. If they were the routine stuff, they sent me to a zoo. They didn't tell you to commit suicide, did they? Look, I've shot everything from headhunters to Hollywood starlets. I know what I'm doing. So do I. You want a close-up of that bull, use your telescopic lens. Are you giving me orders? That's right. Now behave yourself and get the telescopic lens out. You're in the wrong racket. You make a sensational babysitter. Now, wouldn't that burn you? What's the matter? So left that lens at camp. Are you sure? I cleaned it last night. I guess I forgot to put it back. Would, uh, would you mind getting it for me? And leave you here alone? I can get some distant shots from here while you're gone. All right, but stay put. No matter how many pictures I take. Why you make Elephant angry? I wanted to take a picture of him. Picture? Yeah, a photograph taken with the camera. Picture in this box. She can see. You can't see anything yet. They have to be developed and printed. Wait, I've got an idea. <laughs> What's that? Him angry because I make him take shower. That's him. <laughs> How do you do? My name's Chuck Davis. <laughs> well, now that's over with. Come on, I'll show you how I make a living. Now, this is a Polaroid camera. I can shoot you with this without doing any lab work. What do you do? I look through this little opening here until I see what I want to take a picture of. And I press this little jigger, and that's that. Step over there, I'll show you. <laughs> Hold it. That's fine. See, there's really nothing to it. Show me pictures. Oh, wait, it takes a few seconds. Look, Tina, I haven't thanked you for saving my life. I, well, I'm not used to thanking people for things, but what I want to say is, well, thanks. You're welcome. Well, let's see the picture. There you are. What do you think of it? You make magic. Nothing to it, baby. No, it's magic. Jim. Jim, look at magic pictures. Jim. 
<laughs> I don't care if you had a hundred reasons. Nobody but a harebrained idiot would try a stunt like that. Still in one piece, ain't I? Only because Sheena came along. I told you I was sorry. What do you want me to do? Pound my head in the dirt? I guess my goat is you promised not to try anything. In my racket, if I didn't break a promise or two now and then, I'd starve to death. A two cents, I'd call this whole deal off. You can't do that, Bob. You agreed to take me in the Wasahili country. Wasahili? Yeah, a wonder boy here thinks he can talk them into letting him photograph their voodoo right. Why not? I got some station stuff in Haiti last year. Wasahili believe in voodoo, too. When they want to kill a man, they make a doll that looks like him, and they stick pins or something into it. That's true. Well, does it work? Of course it works on anyone who believes in voodoo. The whole thing is psychological. Whatever it is, I want pictures of it. Wasahili dangerous. Yeah? Yes. Ever so often, they go on a voodoo rampage. They raid neighboring villages and capture and kill anyone they can get their hands on. When do they have these wingdings? Well, I suspect whenever the witch doctor thinks he's slipping and wants to strengthen his position by demonstrating his voodoo magic. They wouldn't attack us, would they? You bet they would. That's why I'm not taking an irresponsible idiot like you in a Wasahili country until I know things are peaceful. Sheena, go on ahead and find out. I can't let you do that. Tamaru's got it in for you already. Tamaru? The Wasahili witch doctor. Sheena not afraid of Tamaru. Sheena helped you get magic pictures. Well, that's mighty nice of you. Come, Shem. <laughs> Sheena, go now. Sheena. Yes? Be careful, will you? Do not worry. I'll be back tomorrow morning. <laughs> Voodoo
people Wasaili make voodoo war. I find Jim and warn people in South. I guess they... Go. We followed the river this far. Now the Wasaili had villages here, so we cut across country skirting this section of the swamp. Ah! Sheena! This time make some noise! Wasaili make... What? They kill one prisoner. Sheena help other prisoner get away. You snatched a prisoner away from them? I know do that. They kill him. I'll bet Tamaru's fit to be tied. Boss Aili very angry. I go now to warn trading post. Wait! You've done enough. Now don't rest. I'll get the bar to go to the trading post. You actually see the voodoo ceremony? Man, oh man, what a picture layout that'd make. You know, take pictures. Well, what are you talking about? This is the greatest thing that... No one go into Boss Aili country now. No? I'd like to see anyone stop me. Then turn around. What? You heard, Sheena. No one goes into Wasaili country at a time like this. You're afraid, is that it? Maybe. Or maybe it's just common sense. Come on, Sheena. You'd better go home and get some rest. You've covered a lot of ground today. here make breakfast for you. Well, thanks. Not yet. You go wake Chuck. All right. Grab your socks, fella. The towel's on. Sheena. The crazy fool's gone. Gone? The Wasahili country. We catch up with him. That won't be easy. He's had quite a head start. No waste time. We go. I'll get my gun. I get Jim. Am I glad you speak English? And trying to explain to these fellows I'm not an enemy, I'm a friend. Wasaili, have no friend. I'm your friend. I like you. You lie. Come and segura. Wait a minute. I can explain this whole deal if you give me a chance. Uh, you see it. What's that for? I use for clay image. I make. A clay image of me? When Chief Mainika drives spear into image, you die. Shaquille Yumba. Who's 
This is traveled by many feet. They caught up with him, all right. Maybe next time you listen to reason. There is a next time. Come. Chuck's my responsibility. I can't let you go on with this. Two better than one against so many. That fellow over there has Chuck's Polaroid camera. What are they doing? This doctor makes voodoo dolls. That means they plan to kill him. Not kill him yet. Warriors guard hut. Maybe they keep him there. Yeah. We go around back. Chucky Samba! Now what do you want? Mumbo Jumbo won't work on us. Voodoo kill you. Your magic only works on people ignorant enough to believe in it. We don't believe in voodoo. Whether you believe or not, you die. You may be able to kill us, but not by sticking a spear into those clay dolls. Nabu Katumba! Now you not talk.
magic. Look. If Sheena destroy image, you die, Monica. Drop spear or I throw image into fire. <laughs> Sheena keep image always. If Wasaili make voodoo war again, I destroy image. Understand? Monica, understand. Good. Untie fence. We go in peace. Hello, Rafiki. <laughs> Here, she wants to be a photographer like you. Well, at least he exposed the negative. <laughs> now I've seen everything. Look. <laughs> <laughs> and a blonde at that. <laughs>
Bill you told us about? He's still afraid of living in the jungle with animals and savages. Contact me, Sheena. We won't have to. You'll find us. How? You'll discover that very little happens around here that Sheena doesn't know about. like a good place to pitch camp. River will give you a chance to freshen up. We're making camp. The bye. Hey. tried to kill Tim. It's not my idea of a pet. He just frightened Sheena. He didn't mean any harm. Better Bob keep gun. Don't worry. I will. You'll get this back on the return trip. In other words, you're taking away my only means of protecting myself. Other people have to be protected, too. Come on, Sheena. You're just in time for dinner. Oh, Sheena, this is Virginia Clay. Hello, Sheena. Virginia. Who is he? This is Roger Clay. He's Virginia's uncle. Come have some food, Uncle Roger. I'm not hungry. And don't call me Uncle Roger. I'm not your uncle, young woman, and you know it. Virginia will tell you all about it later, Sheena. She needs your help. I must have been six years old when it happened. I remember my father and mother in the airplane. There was a storm. The plane must have crashed. I guess they were killed. I never saw them again. Did you manage to live in a jungle, a child of six? I told you, Uncle Roger. The natives found me and took care of me. And a safari came through and took me out of the jungle. You should be a writer of fiction, young woman. Tell more. The safari took me to an orphanage in Mombasa. I lived there until I was old enough to go out and make my own way. And in all that time, nobody found out who you really were. How could they? I was just a child. All I knew about myself was my name, Virginia Clay. But then about two months ago, I saw an article in a British magazine. A feature article about lost aircraft. People who disappeared and never been found. There were names. Robert and Helen Clay. And my name, Virginia Clay, their daughter. And sometimes I used to think that this memory of that plane crash was just a dream until I saw those names. I was wrong, young lady. I suggested you become a writer. I'd like to change that. You should become an actor. Why won't you believe me? Why would I lie to you? Because that article also said that my dead brother left an estate of 50,000 pounds. People have been known to lie for such a sum. If my niece had survived, I'd have known it long ago. Suppose we find the plane, Clay. Will you believe her then? I'll tell you when we find the plane. If we find it. Where did plane fall? I don't know. Tell her what you do remember, Virginia. Near the crash, there was a waterfall. Beautiful, misty waterfall. Or many waterfalls. And there was a herd of elephants. One elephant had only one touch. Sorry, I'm afraid that's all I remember. You don't believe me either, do you? Sheena, believe me. Then that's good enough for me. Show her the doll, Virginia. Doll? The thing they gave me to play with. The natives who found me. I'll guess. I've seen it. Probably made by one of the Bantu tribes. Maybe the Wambasi. I probably bought it some tourist shop. Is it Wambasi? No. 
Massage. Are you sure? See? Massage. Massage. Then the waterfall that Virginia remembers. It might be the falls of Kitmantu. Many miles. That way. This Massai tribe. Are they peaceful? That all depends. On what? On what they think you're looking for. And how you go about looking for it. We'll start in the morning. He says there is no elephant. Go back, or they kill. Stay here, Gina. Why were they frightened of the elephant? Elephant with one tusk, Habu. Then there must be such an elephant. They wouldn't have acted that way. Don't you see, Uncle Roger? All I can see is they'll kill us if we go on. They're gone, but not far and not for long. They'll be stalking us from now on. We'll have to move along. Aren't you going to turn back? They can attack us whichever way we move. Our best chance is to pass Kitmantu Waterfall and gamble on running into a trader safari on the belt. If you're not going to turn back the way we came, I demand you send me back with half the bearers. I can't do that, Clay. There aren't any bearers. They dropped everything over there and ran. You can have this now. You may need it. One tusk. 
all must die. Where is my side door? Which right here was. I hope you've loaded only what you absolutely need into your knapsack. Virginia, take my side door. She won't need that, Sheena. Sheena, say, take doll. If she says so. Sheena and Chim go first. Two trees. Watch the trail. Be careful, Sheena. Hurry up with that loading. As soon as those drums stop, those two will be trailing us. Sheena, what does it? Who is that at Jumbo Chino? Who is Sheena? Who is what does it? Who? 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 I go tell Bob. All right? Just give me a few seconds to rest. Sheena, don't do that to me. Trap, Bob. My son. Where? Castillo of Giant Ants, where trail bends. That way. The other two Messiah are behind us. If we're caught between two groups... Don't get caught between them. Go ahead. Sheena fool my side. How? When you hear Sheena's horn, wait. Ten breaths and pass swiftly. Sheena! Come on. Nice work, Sheena. Those other devils are still behind us. Hurry. Go, I am a man who am a sapper, more your commission to kill him. I am from a cousin. I am a member. Go ahead, Pupu.
Do you believe me now, Uncle Roger? We still haven't found an elephant with one tusk. Or a plane. We will. If we live, we will. I hope so. I'd not like to die here without reason. The elephant herds will wade and drink in the pool. Stay under cover while we're looking. Keep to the edge of the jungle. We'll leave our packs here. Go different ways, Bob. Virginia with you. Clay with me. Tina takes dog. Uh, the Messiah are too close. Maybe we'd better stay together. I was afraid before. All this is strange to me, but I'm not a coward. I'm all right now. Me here, sundown. Come. What do you see? Is it the elephant? No. A clump of trees over there. They don't run deep. There's a clearing just beyond. A large one. Your father must have tried to set the plane down in a clearing. The tops of two of those trees were sheared off some time ago. You can see the jagged breaks where something hit them. We'll have a look. You don't see a one tusker, do you? Maybe in herd. Wait, watch. Big one angry. Let's move soon. Sheena, no! Now you believe, Virginia? Him charge soon. Come. Find Bob, Virginia. Go ahead, cry. It'll do you good. would not shoot rifles for my sight to hear. Then they must have been attacked. But only one shot. Follow Sheena. Nzi kwango gama, ujada. Thank 
He remembers fall of flame. Binti, her. Virginia. You remember me. I taught him to say my name and he taught me his. Guru. Guru. Virginia. Binti. Katakama. I thought we were finished, Sheena. La Rua Pembrogino? Paola, he thinks we come to kill elephants with one cut. So that's it. No wonder they were after us. Judging by the medicine man headdress, that one tusker is their god. La Uala, no hurt elephant. Wimma, Wimma. The pleasure, believe me, is all mine. Wamba, 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 Wamba. <laughs> you heard, Uncle Roger? I heard and saw. Can you forgive me? There's nothing to forgive. You couldn't know. I had no proof. Will you come home with me to London? Oh, yes, Uncle Roger. Jungle friends, everything is all right. Come to him. Today, the screen has broken down many old taboos. But even so, we have never yet presented a picture quite so shocking as 20th Century Fox's Five Gates to Hell. Five nurses and a disguised nun, captured by the bloodthirsty, women-hungry gorillas of Indochina. 
facing mass violation from men so sadistically cruel, they make suicide seem the easy way out. You will work, cook, clean, live one woman, two men. See you in hell first. But this is not like movies you've seen before. These girls actually go through the five gates to hell before your startled eyes. Joy, the English girl, who accepted the inevitable to save her skin. Listen, for face. I've had just about enough of you. Our lives are at stake, and there's only one way for a woman. The only way, and it's been the same ever since the Garden of Eden. You've got to use your sex! Athena, the American girl, chosen for his own by the demanding, virile young warlord. The first time she fought. Julia, I better go! Julia! The second time was different. So degraded in body and soul that they have only one way out. To cast off every restraint of sex and fight back with the weapons, the bloodlust of men. <laughs> Tocara. 
Reached through the window and stole this salt right out from under my nose while Bob and I were talking. No, Corvo never steal. They did this time. And it's not the first time either. They've been at it for over a month now. I don't get it. They've always been a good trading tribe. I haven't seen an ounce of trade goods from them in six weeks or more. Been stealing everything they need. No, Jim! <laughs> Salt, not sugar. <laughs> I wish I knew what they were up to. If there were a famine or something, I could... Can you go to Kobo Land find out what's wrong? Wait, Sheena. This isn't the first time they've broken the law. It's a job for the constabulary. Sheena, go. You better go after her, Bob. The way she travels, she'll be a half a day ahead of me. Well, then you better get your battery and equipment and get going. Yeah. It is our tribute. You deny the idol? Our people starve, witch doctor. You dare to refuse? Then let the idol hear you. What's all? Speak now, Nakobos, while the idol looks upon you. <laughs> must have covered them over. No, Jeep. Great idol. An idol make big noise. It was the horn or the exhaust. Strong voodoo. It's not voodoo. It's the witch doctor's trick to get trade goods from the Nakobos. You come now. Sheena, show you. No, I'll show you. But we'll start out in the morning. Good night. <laughs>
Rosie, of all people here in the middle of the jungle, how in the world? Gina, I haven't seen this character since the war. He was my baron, Casa. Best officer Rosley ever worked for. Thanks. Glad to see you. Rosley, make breakfast. Okay. Where you go, Anna? Nokobo territory. To hunt? Trade? Make movie pictures? I guess hunting's about the closest. I'm looking for a jeep. Like the one we had in the army, remember? <laughs> Mr. Bounce Bounce car. Rosley like jeep. But... Rosley come from the Kobos. No see jeep in Nokobo land, one. I have reason to believe it's been found, Rosley. Oh? Sheena know no Kobe country. But Sheena never see you here. Rosler just get here. Not much work in North. I come south to look for a safari job. You've got yourself a job. Well, let's eat. We'll get after our missing jeep. Okay, Wana Bob. Find dead has been put there. Gina, show you. Nakobo, isn't it? Yes. Looks like they don't want company. You missed Dart. Go under. You know it here? Rosley, lucky boy. Everybody in Army says Rosley lucky, no? That's right, Sheena, like a lucky charm. Rosley's good to have around. How far are we from the village? One mile. Let's rest before we go in. Plenty hot. Cool spring, Wana. Rosley, get water. Good. Bob, you sure Rosley good friend? Why, of course. What in the world makes you think he isn't? Sheena, not sure. Woman's intuition, huh? Well, you can relax, Sheena. Rosley's with me for years. He's okay. Maybe he changed. Rosley? Not a chance. Rosley, take cover! What is it, Juana? No cobo. They're getting rough. I'm gonna get that jeep and find out what's eating there. Let Rosley help Juana. No cobos trust me. I go to village and say you're friend. I can't let you risk it. Rosley, be safe. When you hear three shots, you are the village. Let's get going. Headlights. Not same witch doctor. Chief, these are friends of mine. Let them be welcome. I've come to take the idol away, Chief Takara. Remove its evil spell from your people. Taboo! Taboo! Great idol! Taboo! It's nothing but a dressed up jeep. An automobile. Wada. They never see Bounce Bounce before. No, understand. Other witch doctor, Bob. He rule tribe. Where's the head witch doctor? You make voodoo and hut. No Kobo say no go in. Taboo. Try talking to him from the outside. Dead man must know what a jeep is. He's smart enough to make use of it. Which doctor say you take jeep? Good. But pay $200 first. What? 
A conniving thief! Okay, Rosny. Tell him it's a deal. He said you camp down river. He push cheap at night so no cobbles not no idle gone. He gets the rest when I get the jeep. Go quick. Bob, how long do you think before jeep come back? Well, not before dawn when all the Nakobos are certain to be sleeping. With Rosley on guard up the trail when they push that jeep down here. Push? But you heard the motor running, then the battery in the jeep is okay. Evans told me he sold another battery about a month ago. <sighs> Smart, that witch doctor, whoever he is. Something Sheena must find out. Jim, stay here. Bring Hunter and Sheena here. This time, no Kobo see blood sacrifice. I have warned you. No call ever see them die. He begins to doubt idle. Go! Go! you sell Bob? Battery, yeah. What about it? You sell one before? Yes, about a month ago. Who buy? Oh, some bear said he needed it for a safari for lights. A big friendly fellow, always smiling. Single East from North? Yeah, Rosley, I think he said his name. Gina! Gina! So you're the big wheel. Where's Sheena? Watch trail. Komasuda. What did you do to my bearer? Kill him? What? Sheena go for police? I don't know. But somebody will. Sooner or later. Not you. When I will kill you, Tukar and all his tribe give me everything they have. You're no Nakobo. No. Nakobo's poor. Me? Rich. When I will kill you, be richer. You mean when you kill me? No. Idol will do it. Jeep. Great idol. The hunters may be idle angry. The hunter 
must die! But I will not need our help. The idol will kill him! Kill hey! Abonda! Huh? You seem to know a lot about jeeps. The no, cobalt's not know, though. Big magic to them when you die. Better than blood sacrifice. Quick. No pain. <gasps> yeah. Thanks a million. Got it all. Bravo. Always know Rosley, no friend. Ross did not need this anymore. You never tell anyone. She knows not to buy it. No, she isn't, Rosley. He should have known better than to be tempted by Rosley. I guess he wanted to help his sons, but he picked the wrong way to do it. I'll leave his punishment to you and your tribe, Takara. Takara should have been wiser. My people never see Jeep car before. Great eyes, great noise. Here's the money Rosley got by stealing your trade goods. I'd suggest you go to the trading post and pay Evans for whatever you've stolen from him. Evans, good friend to Nokobos. Okada, sorry. Evans, good man. Him forgive. I don't think the authorities will be as lenient with Rodney for stealing a government jeep. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha,
Double talk, mister. Okay, let her go. Not yet, old man. I got a score to settle, and I ain't taking any chances on it backfiring. Turn her loose. I'll oblige you. Not your way, gunfighter. Mine. Anyway, I'll do. Good. Give him your holster. I won't hesitate to shoot. Two bullets. Give it to him. Well, no fancy draw, gunfighter. Just one gun and two bullets for each man. Now tell them to clear out. All day. Chim get fresh fruit or Chim no eat today. Oh. We got 
move fast today, Tinkler. Take care of the fire. I'll check the truck. <laughs> What's the matter? The hockey. Sick. Sick? Come. Gotta go back to Mombasi. What? Lahaki's got typhoid. Typhoid? I've seen typhoid before. If Lahaki's got it, we all may get it. We have to turn back. Don't be a fool. We can't turn back. Hunt. Shut up. What are you gonna do? He's as sick as you say he is. He's better off dead. No. Why not? Then we burn the tent down and move on. Now get that other tent down and onto the truck. Hunt. Shut up. Do as I tell you. Go on. Go on. Do as I tell you. What's the matter? Well, hockey's gone. He must have heard us talk and cut his way out of the back of the tent. He won't get far. Why waste time and ammunition? Let the jungle take care of him for us. I decided to stop on my way back to Mombasa and see you, Doctor. I'm glad you did, Bob. Here's your tea. Thank you. Have you seen Sheena lately? Uh, two weeks ago, on my way up to the Tuchani River country. Sit down. What took you way up there? The Morani guerrillas. Another raid on the Maasai? Five villages completely wiped out. Houses burned, cattle slaughtered. You know, the Marani are getting to be as bad as the Mau Mau. Or worse. How does anyone deal with people like that? It isn't the Marani people, Dr. Carr. Basically, they're a peaceful tribe. It's their leader, Tanyika. A fanatic who originally came from Asia. Wants to rule the whole Maasai country. He never will. He might, with enough guns. Guns? 
The Marani have no guns. From a sign, the Chuchani villages said that about half the guerrillas were armed with rifles. Where can they be getting them, Bob? There are people in Mombasa who'd sell anything to anybody if the price were right. Dr. Carr, I'm going to... <coughs> Jim! He's trying to tell us something. He wants us to follow him. Sheena must have sent him. Come on. as if he were wounded. He wasn't. Then how he died? Typhoid. What are you going to do now? First, prepare a vaccine, and then find the source of the infection. That means finding out where this Mirani gorilla came from, how he got to this spot, and where and how he contracted the disease. Maybe Sheena and I can help you, Doctor. How about it, Sheena? You'll have to work fast, or we'll have an epidemic spreading through the entire Maasai country. We'll start to work right now. Camp here. You're right. The spire is more than two or three hours old. Trap. It was a truck or a small scout car. Came in from the south in the direction of Mombasa. And then what west? West is Morani country. We follow track. <laughs> And ahead of schedule, too. Where do you want to stop? My men will take charge. Aumwani Aitabili. Tickler, get my hand. Maybe it was an animal. No, it was man. 
better have a look around then. Be careful. It's Murani country now. Gone. Like the car was right. Maranis do have guns. Guns and sickness. We must stop both before they fill jungle with death. Hi, Tanya. Come. Where is your friend? I think he's in the tent asleep. He is sick. He'll be all right. We'll be heading back to Mombasi in a couple of minutes. Tanya! It is Kunomo. Tanyika, Commander Kulaki, Valimini, Kamawala, Sheena. Sheena. What is it, Tanyika? Sheena and White Hunter come in this direction. Sheena and I have fought one another for many months. But now I'm going to end the fight. Now, hold on, Tanyika. I don't want your tribe killing while I'm around. If I wind up in jail, you don't get any more guns. Perhaps you are right. Now take your boys in the jungle and hide. Let me handle Sheen and this hunter. I'll get rid of them. Hello. Oh, hello there. My name is Bob Rayburn. Mine's Gunther. I don't have to be told who you are. You're Sheena. I've heard about you all the way from Nairobi to Cape Town. Come on over and have some deep. No, thanks. Is this a hunting party? Oh, no, no. Me and my partner, Tinkler, he's asleep in a tent. We were hired to meet a trading safari here with extra supplies. The traders will be along tomorrow, the next day. Taking a pretty big chance, aren't you? Big chance? How? This Marani country. I don't think the Maranis are as dangerous as they're cracked up to be. We think they're more dangerous. Where did you camp night before last, Gunther? Night before last? Why? Right here. Why? A Marani gorilla was found dead near the Maasai Medical Mission compound. Dr. Carr at the mission says he died of typhoid. Typhoid, huh? Well, that's bad. If we don't find out where and how that Marani contracted typhoid, we may be in for an epidemic that'll kill thousands of people. What's that got to do with me? You may be one of those thousands. Less than a quarter of a mile from where that Marani was found, somebody had camped for the night. Somebody that was driving a truck. And you think I'm that somebody, huh? Oh, look, friend. I may not think the Maranis are dangerous, but I don't trust them enough to give one of them a ride in my truck. Sorry, you got the wrong party. If you'll excuse me, I've got to rouse my partner out of bed. He lied. Jim. Where's Jim? He's probably gone out for breakfast. I find him.
Sure you won't have some to eat? No, thanks. We still have to find the source of that typhoid case. Let's get going. Good luck. Sheena, what's going on? You see. Bob, come. Tell me what's going on. Murani. Murani? Where? There. Looks like the Murani leader. Tanyika. How did you know Tanyika was around? Many rifles in tent. Rifles? Then Gunt is a gun runner. Bob, go for help. Sheena, stay and watch. I don't like to leave you here alone. Bob, go. All right, Sheena. Bob! My ankle. I think it's sprained. What are we waiting for? For my next raid on the Maasai. Sheena has encouraged them to resist me. I shall leave her dead in one of their villages to show them Tanika's power. Now let us break camp. Uh, help. Help me. What's the matter, Tinker? Tinker? Is it typhoid? Listen to me. We'll help you if you'll help us. Our wrists are tied. If you'll untie us, we'll get you to a doctor. Gunther in here. Call him, Tinker. Uh, Gunther. 
So you and Sheena are going out and get that truck and back it up to the tent. And if you know what's good for you, don't try any tricks. Understand? Come. Here, take this. No, Bob, keep gun. Watch. of the world. As long as we know from Tinkler that he and Lohaki must have contracted typhoid in Mombasa, there's nothing to worry about here. The health authorities in Mombasa can take care of things at that end. But we might as well be sure. How is Tinkler? He'll pull through. Now you, Sheena. And with Tanyika dead, that'll be the end of the Marani Gorillas. There you are, Sheena. And now one for Chim. Come on, Chim, this won't hurt. <laughs> Bitter cold Nebraska winters and an alcoholic father were not situations that Irish McCalla enjoyed. As soon as she graduated from high school at 17, she made her way to sunny Southern California, where two of her sisters and oldest brother Bill had already ventured. She found a lovely boarding house in Santa Monica, not too far from her siblings, and a job as a waitress. Which was good. Because you eat right away, and the tips helped financially. In her off time, she frolicked on the Malibu beach. And with her 5 foot 10 inch height and a 39 24 36 figure, she was quite the head turner. And it seemed like in no time that she was the top model for men's magazine. But modeling was not her goal. She set her heart on being an artist. She enrolled in the Otis College of Art and Design in Los Angeles, where the famous Norman Rockwell was artist in residence. She was a serious art student. And even as a young girl, Irish was interested in music, dance, and especially painting. When she was just 14, she exhibited her first watercolor in an exhibit at the Jocelyn Museum in Nebraska. 
She was born Nellie Elizabeth McCalla on Christmas Day in 1928 to an Irish Catholic family. Which, of course, is where she got her nickname Irish. Being a painter was the direction she wanted to go. But life, however, sometimes leads you down paths you least expect. Following waitressing, she began working the night shift at the McDonnell Douglas factory, freeing her days to supplement her income by modeling. She was just 18, and her Amazonian figure began showing up in all sorts of men's magazines. As one publisher remarked, Irish and Betty Page were perhaps the first figure models to become stars simply by displaying their curves for the camera. Her big modeling moment came when Irish met the acclaimed pin-up artist Alberto Vargas at a Miss California beauty contest that she had entered. He asked her to pose, and she did, becoming a Vargas girl, the generic term used to describe his rendered images of perfect women. She said that he showed her how he painted, which was helpful to her main artistic interests. It was in 1951 that she met and married her first husband, Patrick McIntyre. They had two sons. Just before giving birth, she was active as a chorus girl in Las Vegas. Then in the mid-50s came the moment that would change everything for her and pop culture. Simultaneously, while throwing a bamboo spear on a Malibu beach, a movie agent spotted her. She was quickly signed, and it was off to Mexico for six months to film the TV series Sheena. The production company knew they had the perfect Amazonian woman for the role. She could even throw spears. The Sheena series ran from 1955 to 1956, and then in syndication, the 26 episodes ran for years. It was a great success. No pseudo cutting against law. She appeared in five films, Hands of a Stranger, 1962, Five Bold Women, 1960, Five Gates to Hell and the Beat Generation, 1959, and the horror cult classic She Demons, 1958. She also appeared in TV shows including 77 Sunset Strip, Have Gun Will Travel, You Bet Your Life, The Tonight Show and several others. It was a fantastic accomplishment from 1955 to 1963, just eight years. Leaving Hollywood, she picked up her art brush and continued to do what she preferred doing and that is paint. My subject matter is as varied as everything else I do. I paint in oil, watercolors, and pastels. I enjoy painting nudes, seascapes, landscapes, Indian portraits, and mountain men. Whatever I'm doing at the time seems to be my favorite subject. Living and showing my work in Arizona, I tend to have a greater call for Western art, but my paintings of children and nudes are also in good demand. Even Pat Nixon, the wife of the president, purchased one of Irish's seascape paintings. Paintings by Irish McCallock can be found in the Los Angeles Museum of Arts and Sciences and the Cowboy Hall of Fame. She passed away in 2002 from a stroke and complications from her fourth brain tumor. She will always be remembered as that strong independent Amazonian woman, Sheena Queen of the Jungle. The kind of woman that genuinely impacted culture for the better. <laughs>